Luke 10, <clears throat> starting verse 38. Now it came to pass as they went that he entered into a certain village, and a certain woman named Martha received him into her house. And she had a sister called Mary, which also sat at Jesus' feet and heard his word. But Martha was cumbered about much serving and came to him and said, Lord, dost thou not care that my sister hath left me to serve alone? Bid her therefore that she help me. And Jesus answered and said unto her, Martha, Martha, thou art careful and troubled about many things, but one thing is needful. And Mary hath chosen that good part, which shall not be taken away from her. So, you know, I mean, our goal should be more than, you know, just knowing the word of the Lord, just, you know, uh, even just searching the scriptures. It's more than that. Uh, it's not knowing the word of the Lord, but to know the Lord of the word. And that will require uh, more than good eyes for searching. That will require a heart that really wants him and and he will open himself as this story uh, shows us that he will from this story and then the one where Lazarus is raised from the dead <clears throat> we get a picture of Martha we get a picture that uh, you know she probably attended synagogue every Sabbath you thought I was gonna say Sunday didn't you? every Sabbath day and uh, she seemed to know her Bible doctrines pretty well. So, but but with that, which is which is best, you know? And Jesus already said which one. But which is best? Is it is it best to have correct doctrine, which may be very centered on the Lord, or to know Him? Uh, um, it would be a little bit like if the fact was that. Um, uh, Martha didn't really know Jesus, had not really met him, and he was in her house for the first time. Uh, maybe she had seen him in synagogue or something, but Mar Mary is there at his feet knowing him. And um, so uh, God is not after spiritual giants, you know, or mental giants, might I even add that, but people whose, whose hearts long to be changed and to be brought in to that person beyond just his teachings and his words and stuff like that. And, you know, nowadays and with with modern day religion, <clears throat> truth is no longer centered on a person. It isn't. It's centered on different forms or different uh, ministries or things such as that. And you know, I've, I've often thought how truth is is in the shape of a slaughtered lamb. <laughs> that's truth. That's where you're going to find the truth of God. And that's where you're going to find Jesus' heart and the Father's heart and the Holy Spirit's willingness to open not just the Word, but open the Word that pertains to Jesus' heart. So um, that that kind of truth that's not centered in a person, that's not centered in Jesus. Um, it's, you know, it hadn't resulted in the church walking in truth. It hasn't. It's it missed the mark. And, and uh, the truth is that if, that if we're not walking in truth, then we, yes, we've missed the mark, but we're, that's going to bring judgment to us. And, of course, the Lord is good, and he'll, he'll use anything to get us to him, but nonetheless. So um, <clears throat> I mentioned that Mar Martha was a faithful servant to Jesus. Um, but in the end, ministry was the more important thing to him than what Mary chose, ministry. And, you know, Probably all of us that, that listen to this thing, we know all about ministry. We've been involved in everything. There's nothing wrong with ministry unless it is placed above our heart seeking Jesus. It's not about our hands serving him. That's Martha. It's about our heart seeking him and to, to know him. And, you know, Martha, she was probably confident. 
I think I'm saying this based on kind of her approach to Jesus uh, during Lazarus's death and everything. But I think she had a confidence and everything. And by that time, anyway, she was acquainted with Jesus. And, um, you know, probably one of the things that she thought was so important is that she had a family focus in relationship to Jesus. Jesus is a family focus member there at that house in Bethany all the time. And it's more than just a family focus. And a whole lot of Christians are that way. That's all they do. Oh, Lord, bless my family. May we have uh, devotions in my family. May we da-da-da-da. And that's fine. I'm, I'm not condemning that. It's just that there's more to it. And the truth of that is found in Mary. It's not found in Martha. And, you know, even if it's a deep respect for the Lord. And I think Martha did have that. But uh, it's got to be more than that. It's got to be more than uh, we have Jesus in our family and we really deeply respect Jesus. So you think about Mary and uh, <clears throat> she didn't get her truth from um, an anointed preacher that was preaching to him. She got it straight out of the heart of Jesus. And in fact, the thing that really just was moving me as I meditated on sharing all of this was that she knelt down at Jesus's feet and she you know the scripture says of Jesus it says uh, and, the, and the word was made flesh and and dwelt among us the word there is actually tab tabernacled meaning that Jesus was the tabernacle of God. He was. He literally was the tabernacle of God, and, and God was in him. I in him, and he in me. That's the way he described his relationship, uh, the Father. And, um, and so, <clears throat> um, so Mary sits down there at his feet, and, you know, the Scripture also says, uh, through the rent veil his flesh. Mary pushes past his flesh, the guy, the person, and she starts entering in through past the outer court, past that veil, and starts hearing his heart and starts um, seeing him the way that he is and letting him share on a basis that is totally different than he might do in the synagogue or even in the temple. And um, um, uh, the picture that I got was that she had found David's tabernacle. That's the picture that I got. She found David's tabernacle, and she entered into it, and she was there. Whereas Martha, she again, maybe she saw him in synagogue. Maybe she even saw him in, in the temple. But it was more like um, uh, Solomon's temple or Moses' tabernacle instead of the relationship that David had. And, and the proof that there was something to that was Jesus said, you know, what she has will not be taken away from her. What I preach to you could be taken away. But if you go after the Lord and you press past uh, the veil into his heart, oh my, you know, and, and, and Mary is... She's knowing him as the fountain of living waters, you know. That's real. That's real to her. And it's real to Jesus because he knows the difference. And he knows that Martha needs help. He knows that. But there are bigger issues in his heart than that. Oh, somebody's struggling with what they've got and everything, you know. <laughs> He knows, and he, he made a big deal out of it. So, you know, he, Jesus wasn't instructing Mary, but he was instructing Martha. He was instructing her and saying, you know, this is, this is better. This is much better. <clears throat> and Jesus, in her openness, is just pouring over her. And as you know, Later on, when the time is right, she'll come back to him and she'll pour over him. What a beautiful, beautiful picture. All right, so um, let's, go, let's go to that story of Lazarus uh, and his death. 
Um, and it's found in John 11, and starting in verse 1. John 11, verse 1. Now, a certain man was sick named Lazarus of Bethany, the town of Mary, and her sister Martha. It was that that Mary which anointed the Lord with ointment and wiped his feet with the hair whose brother Lazarus was sick. Therefore his, his sisters sent unto him, saying, Lord, behold, he whom thou lovest is sick. When Jesus heard that, he said, This sickness is not unto death, for, but for the glory of God, that the Son of God might be glorified thereby. Now Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus, when he had heard, therefore, that he was sick, he abode two days still in the same place where he was. Just in case we didn't get the fact that he didn't, he didn't come because he didn't love them. He loved them, says, and he loved them, but he waited. Okay, so his love for them is is not necessarily seen in saving them. So. Uh, and when he heard, therefore, that he was sick, he abode two days still in the same place where he was. Then after that saith to he to his disciples, let us go into Judea again. All right, and verse 14 says, Then said Jesus unto them plainly, Lazarus is dead. I am going for your sake that I was not there. It's for your sake that I was not there to the intent that you may believe. Nevertheless, let us go unto him. So uh, the disciples didn't understand that because they think in terms of what everybody thinks, that Jesus is there only to save us from every little crisis and problem that we have. And so they're confused. And, uh, you know, most people do believe that his purpose is that's his job. He's, you know, just, he's exist to save us from, you know, every crisis and every problem. <clears throat> Verse 17 says, Then when Jesus came, he found that that uh, he had lain in the grave four days already. And then verse 20, Then Martha, as soon as she heard that Jesus was coming, went and met him. But Mary sat still in the house. Then said Martha unto Jesus, Lord, if thou hadst been here, my brother had not died. But I know that even now you can save us. Um, what, whatsoever thou wilt ask of God, God will give it to thee. Jesus saith unto her, Thy brother shall rise again. Martha saith unto him, I know that he shall rise again in the resurrection at the last day. So notice in verse 20, Then Martha, as soon as she heard Jesus was there, the first person to show up when Jesus shows up is Martha, okay? And she's there, and she's there to show a little bit of her spiritual side, you know. Um, at, she sort of accuses Jesus, if you had been here, this wouldn't have happened. And then she begins to point out to Jesus her grasp of spiritual things. I know that in the last day, you know, and I think she's doing it to show that she has a spiritual side too, like Mary does. You know, she's not just a cook. And uh, <clears throat> uh, and I put Martha knew the book, but Mary knew the living word. Martha spoke of a resurrection, but Jesus spoke of another kind of resurrection. So uh, again, she shows her Bible doctrines uh, <clears throat> and and makes that an issue, um, but she doesn't see him. She doesn't see him. She didn't see him in her house. She doesn't see him yet in these situations. And like all the people that are there for the funeral, they're seeking answers. Martha's seeking answers. Jesus is seeking oneness. That's where his heart is. If we don't ever get that, we'll always be off base. We'll always be somewhere else. All right, then verse 25 through 27. <clears throat> Jesus said unto her, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. Believest thou this? She saith unto him, 
Yea, Lord, I believe that thou art the Christ, the Son of God, which should come into the world. Jesus didn't ask her if she believed he was the Christ or the Messiah or the Son of God. Um, everybody believes that. Just I mean, every Christian believes that. Um, that wasn't that wasn't what he was asking. Uh, Jesus said unto her, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believes in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. Believest thou this? He's not talking doctrines. She's, she's just caught up in doctrines. Yeah, I know the resurrection. And, you know, yeah, I, you know, I hear what you're saying. And I believe that because that's what she said. Yeah, I, I believe that. But does she believe this? Jesus said, believest thou this? And she took that based on her own understanding and said yes to something that she didn't understand at all. In verse 37 and 38, And some of them <clears throat> said, Could not this man which opened the eyes of the blind have caused that even this man should not have died? Therefore Jesus, again groaning in himself, came to the grave. He's just groaning. If he... if if it was all about saving us from death, you know, that we well, we won't die, then he would have showed up. But when it's there's something much greater, then we need to listen and not, you know, formulate um, our concepts of what we want and what Christianity has taught us and, and tell him we understand what he says. So... Um, so verse 38 through 40, it was a cave and a stone lay upon it. And Jesus said, take the stone away. And Martha, the sister of him said, uh, the sister of him that was dead saith unto him, Lord, by this time he stinketh for he'd been in there four days. So Jesus said, look, I'm the resurrection and the life. Roll the stone away. And she goes, oh, we can't do that. Well, I thought you wanted me here to raise him, you know. <laughs> from the dead. It, it, if you were Jesus, you would groan again. And he did. Okay. So, um, but here's verse 40. I love this. Jesus saith unto her, Said I not unto thee that if thou wouldest believe, thou shouldest see the glory of God. So when did he say that? Because when did he say you'll see the glory of God? When did he say that? When he quoted the, those verses we read, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, though you are dead, there's hope for the dead. Sometimes there's no hope for the living, but there's hope for the dead. Um, uh, yet shall he live, and, and whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. Believest thou this? Saith unto uh, uh, she saith unto him, Yea, Lord, I believe that thou art the Christ, the, the Son of God, which should come into this world. So this is why he's groaning, and he also weeps during this time. And he tells us one thing, and we make it fit into our understanding. And so, uh, three more hours here. Uh, not quite that long. Verse 43 through 45 uh, let me just see. Yeah. And when he was thus had spoken, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come forth. And he that was dead came forth, bound hand and foot with grave clothes. And his face was bound about with a napkin. Jesus saith unto them, Loose him and let him go. Then many of the Jews, then Many of when this all happened, then many of the Jews which came to Mary and had seen the things which Jesus did, then they believed on him. But what did they believe? They believed what Martha was wanting, said, thought Jesus was saying. And um, so, so then Mary comes, and um, I wrote down it's Mary's turn. Um, Jesus didn't have to bring up, you know, anything. She didn't bring up any doctrines. So Jesus would have to explain to her. Um, 
he showed forth the resurrection. He didn't just raise Lazarus from the dead. There's a truth beyond what we usually see there. Uh, Martha's doctrine of resurrection had no power. But Jesus, the life behind the veil, had the power. And um, so we are not of those who are content to learn deeper truths. We want him who is the life of resurrection living in us now. Doctrines may explain the power but only Jesus as life is the power. And so, let's pray. Lord, we just long to be able to sit down at Jesus' feet, as, as it were, to go into the Holy of Holies the way Mary did. Yes, she, she messed up after that, but Father, in the end, she understood death, and she honored it. And she poured out on it. But Father, it began with her pressing past the flesh and the, the man that walked the earth into the eternal one who was inside of that tabernacle. And she pressed past the, the veil of his flesh. And she began to hear, and she began to know, and she would eventually be one of the ones that Jesus would have as a memorial and make it for everybody that ever reads the word because it was memorialized in his heart for eternity. So open our hearts, open our desire for more of Jesus. We ask in his name. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Again, thank you so much for letting me come and share. Thank you for loving Jesus. I know you do. Thank you for staying hungry. That's hard to do in this age with all this going on around us. And yet you've done that. And I, I love you. I bless you. <laughs> and I am privileged to be with you. So, well, I don't know when's the next time, but it won't be Martha and Mary. We'll do something else. All right. See you then.